Hello, it's me again. It's Krzysztof Waśniewski on the scientific blog uh, Discover Social Sciences. Mm, this update uh, is a little bit of an answer to questions which I had from my students. Uh, these were questions essentially about Keynes, about John Maynard Keynes and his economic theory. Uh, students, especially in the early years of studies, are struggling a little bit with the Keynesian theory and, excuse me, I just want to adjust my headphones. Uh, and uh, I understand the struggle because I read Keynes and I know that sometimes he could be a little bit cryptic. You don't quite understand uh, what the hell uh, the man wanted to get across as his message. Uh, so I am trying to wrap up uh, like again a compound answer or a compound explanation how to read John Maynard Keynes. So this update is essentially for those interested in the theory of economics, maybe in the history of economics, and it is very much addressed to the students of economics, to all those who deal somehow with the theory of John Maynard Keynes. Uh, you will excuse me when I look a little bit on the side, I just consult my notes because I wanted to be quite precise. I accumulated a lot of thoughts about John Maynard Keynes, about his theory, and I want like to get them across in relative order. Okay. Before I go further, just an explanation as usually. Uh, this video goes or comes together uh, with a written update on my blog. So you can see the title under the video and below the title in the description box you can see a link. If you click on the link, on the link discoversocialsciences.com you go to the website of my blog and on the website of my blog you can find a written update the body text of which bears the same title as this video and where you can find sort of more structured exposition of the same topic I am sort of outlining in this video. Okay, so we go. So students ask me, uh, asked me questions about John Maynard Keynes, about uh, how they can possibly understand his theory, which seems a little bit cryptic. Now, there is a thing that I advise to all my students. Whenever you read a piece of theory, whenever you read a book, keep in mind that whatever kind of story whoever is telling you, so whatever kind of story a scientist tells you in a book or in an article, at the end of the day, they are telling you their own story, the story of their own existence. If you want to understand what the hell the given person wants to tell you, what do they mean, try to understand the context uh, in which their theory was coined up. So in the case of Keynes, uh, first of all, uh, you have to keep in mind that Keynes, John Maynard Keynes, was progressively forming his economic theory across the 1920s and the 1930s. The 1920s were a decade where people essentially were running forward. It was the 1920s in the recent history of the Western world are almost proverbially cited as a period of exuberance of uh, excessive behavior, of excessive pursuit of wealth and pleasure. And it is normal because the 1920s came right after World War I and the, the epidemic of Spanish flu, which took place in 1918. Sounds familiar, huh? Uh, and uh, so the 1920s were a period of exuberance. It was a period when business was being done so quickly and uh, with so high level uh, of risk uh, that it was even harder to understand how can possibly anyone uh, do business with such big margins of uncertainty. 
And then came the 1930s, then came the Great Depression of the 1930s, uh, then came uh, the emergence of the Nazi regime in Germany, uh, and it was like a brutal check after that exuberance of the 1920s. So John Maynard Keynes was forming his economic theory, his social theory, over that very strange period of time. So um, a period of exuberance followed by a very brutal check from reality. Uh, and that's the first thing. And, to, and when I tried to understand his thinking, I found uh, a much earlier piece of writing from him. It is a treatise on probability or a theory of probabilities, which he published in 1921. So like 15 years, no, 13 years uh, before the general theory of unemployment, interest and money. In that theory of probability, Keynes pr presents an interesting point of view that probability is essentially about propositions, not about events. He claims straightforwardly, we should forget about looking or about studying the probability of single events. We should rather focus on the probability of propositions. And when I read this and when I read the, or browsed through his treatise on probability, I understood that this man, uh, I mean John Maynard Keynes, uh, had an intellectual stance with today would be qualified as a, a theory of fuzzy truth. So he distinguished many degrees of truth. We normally think that something, uh, that the proposition is true or false. According to Keynes, there are many degrees of probability that something is true or that something is false. Huh? Uh, so this comes another thing. When you read Keynes, try to keep in mind that this was such a sharp mind uh, that it is really hard to distinguish between what he was really thinking, between, uh, between the real message he wanted to get across on the one hand and what he wanted his readers to believe. Hmm? He had that many layer structure of uh, narrative in his writings. So you need to keep that in mind. And here comes a recommendation when you read Keynes. Always check his claims with the reality around you. Because when you read especially the economic theory of Keynes, you can come, uh, come by those elegant claims which sort of put order in his model but which empirically are false. For example, he claims savings equal investment. In theory, in a closed economic system, yes, but when you just check the elementary economic statistics, you will find out that it is false. In the same manner, he claims that investment equals amortization of fixed assets. Not really. Once again, check the facts. Huh? Uh, so, when you read Keynes, try to remember, he was trying to put some order in his own perception of like 15 years and those uh, of 15 years of history, which from his point of view and from the point of view of any um, person who, who lived then, those 15 years were essentially chaotic, were extremely turbulent. What we are living right now with the COVID-19 pandemic is just like a faint glimpse, like a faint reflection of what those people back then in the 1920s and the 1930s were going through. Maybe we will go through something similar. I, I don't know. Huh? Uh, but this is the first thing to keep in mind. And in that update in the written text of this up update, I bring forth a comparison between Keynes on the one hand and uh, Joseph Alois Schumpeter on the other hand. Uh, I do it because those two social thinkers, those two economists, published their theories almost at the same time. If I remember well, Keynes published his general theory in 1934 for the first time, 
and uh, Schumpeter published his business cycles in 1936, if I remember well. So it is like almost contemporary to each other. And these are very two very different takes on the economic reality. Keynes tries to wrap up chaos in the form of a very elegant theory. It is as if somebody took a pit bull and disguised it into a chihuahua in a pink in a pink vest. And Schumpeter uh, goes another way. He sort of faces that chaos straight in the eyes. Uh, he looks at that chaos straight in the eyes and he all openly claims that we always live in a cycle that we barely comprehend. That we are part of the economic cycle and the cycle is not part of us. So we can never completely understand uh, what is the change we are currently going through. Okay, so these are some uh, loose thoughts on, on the theory of John, Minor, of John Maynard Keynes and on a possible way of interpreting his writings. So here comes a message from me to my students. If you have a book to read, like that by John Maynard Keynes, if it seems hardly understandable, once again, remember, what the guy wants to get across is his own story. Try to understand what kind of existential story, what a story of life is like hidden behind all those equations, all those elegant theoretical claims. Once you understand this, it will be much easier for you to grasp the whole theory. Okay, so that would be all in that update. Once again, in the description box below the video, you have a link to the website of my blog, discoversocialsciences.com. If you click on the link, it, uh, on the link, sorry, uh, it uh, takes you to, the, to my website. There you will find a written update with the same title as the title under this video. So, have fun with science, have fun uh, with your own thinking and with discovering things. Bye!